Hi, if you want to see how our family did our DIY kitchen, our black splash, and our countertops, stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is basically a vlog and a how-to of me and my family remodeling our kitchen, our cabinet our cabinets and our backsplash in our kitchen. I hated it when we moved in and now it's time for an update and stay tuned. So our garage has been under reconstruction for I don't know how long. So we're taking the cabinets off. We're sanding them down with some sandpaper that we got from Home Depot. I think it was like $4. Um, and we're sanding the front and back of our cabinet doors. We had to take them down and put them in the garage. After you sand them down, you wipe off the dust and yeah, front and back. So my goal is not to talk too much, but I want to make sure everybody knows what to do. So like I said, we sanded both sides, front and back of each cabinet. We went in and we couldn't take everything out of the cabinet. So we put as much paper and towels down as possible so we wouldn't get dust on any food or utensils in our kitchen. And then after I was done sanding down everything, we did go in and wipe everything off. So you have to sand down every part that has wood. Take away all the shininess, not to, we're not trying to scrape the wood. We're just trying to take off the shiny part. So that's why we're briefly, I mean, barely going over it with the sandpaper on the cabinets. And like I said, you have to make sure it's every part of the wood that's on there is sandpapered down. You will see totally the difference of um you know the newly newly painted and when it's sanded down so this is the before of our cabinets and our backsplash which i hate i hate this ugly cam what is it like a camel color it's so ugly it just brought it was like a downer to the house when we came in i was like this is our kitchen it didn't come with any um, door handles or anything so we're going in basically and taping off everything that can get paint on it from like the paint on the um, cabinets and the floor we're going inside of the cabinets and duct taping with with um, painters tape and then the edges of the uh, granite so basically anywhere that the gel paint stain can touch we're taping off so you can see inside the cabinets how we did that and so my husband purchased this gel um stain gel stainer from home depot and we had to get two of those to complete our cabinets and we had i think nine or ten cabinet doors and two little bitty cans of these completed our whole cabinet so once you open it up you have to stir it around and make sure the mixture everything is on the back of the jar to tell you um you can see my husband has already completed that's why the jar is like dirty my husband already did the cabinets outside and so you need to go in the motion of the the I guess the grain on the wood you go in the same motion of that the same way with sanding the the cabinets you go in the same motion of the grain don't go against it in the opposite direction because it will make a total and complete utter mess and look ugly so now we're going into the backsplash and we found out we was looking at a lot of YouTube pages and they made it seem so simple but our backsplash was so thick we're like how are we gonna do this so we found out that hitting the backsplash just front on would crack it and it would come off and it was like it took us probably like 30 minutes to figure that out because we was trying not to rip <clears throat> we were trying not to rip the sheetrock because we were not using um cement we're using a a tape to hold the backsplash This was a hard task. It doesn't seem simple. And it was three of us with three different hammers. It took us probably like two hours to completely take this backsplash off. It was really, really thick. Like, it looked like some tile that you need to put on the ground. That's how thick it was. And not including the middle part. Like, that was the most intensive beatdown that my walls have ever had got. Um, yeah, it was very... 
I want to say Alicia did probably like 65% of this job because she was a beast at this. Like, I don't know where she got her little beating skills from. I don't know if she's beating up little boys at school or what, but she was going to town and helping us complete this task. Like, she did majority of the work, seriously. So once we beat our backsplash as much as possible, we're going in with this tape, this adhesive to stick onto the sheetrock and make our backsplash stick to. And it's very, very sticky. And once you put it on, you cannot take it off. So you need to make sure you have your measurements right and you smooth it down. You can see my husband smoothing it, smoothing it down so that it sticks very good. And we didn't have any holes in our sheetrock, thank God, because that would have been something that we had to cover up. So now that he put the sheet rock, I mean the backsplash on, he's going in and pressing it to make sure it is sticky. So even though the measurements are precise, they have like every six, no, every two is like the same pattern. And so it just slides in perfectly. Um, we did have to go around the outlets, which caused some concerns. And so we had to cut individual pieces out, which you'll see later. So for those pieces that we need like a straight edge, like the corners or um, around the outlets, my husband had to buy a cutter, which we got from Home Depot. Everything came from Home Depot except for the marble um, backsplash we got from Floor and Decor. But he's going in and cutting this straight so you can see it so we can put it in the corners or on the edges. This is not a one man's job. Um, I mean, you probably could do it by yourself, but along the way, you need some you need some help. And this, like I said, it's a puzzle. So you're just basically putting it together. And I don't think you need to hire somebody, but if you can't do it, hell, if I can do it, you can do it, we can do it. We can do it together. But don't take off the tape until you're ready to start on that section. So if you feel like this is going to take longer than expected, don't take off the tape on all the way at the end if you think you're not going to complete it because you don't want to get anything stuck on it that you won't be able to adhere the, the backsplash to the tape. So here my husband's showing you basically how he cut it and how you can get that even, you can cut tile. It, you know, it's, it's hard, but you can cut it and it's possible. So I was going for a mocha look and that's why I chose this backsplash to match my cabinets. Um, I could have went with something lighter, but maybe we can do it another time. So this is our first house and so we was looking to upgrade it every way we can and why not start with your kitchen and then work our way up. So I, you see I was counting it, how many I needed to attach to the other pieces and it's a puzzle. Like I said, every other piece is connecting. So I'm so thankful for the people who made this because they was like, this is a how to complete a task for dummies <laughs> remodeling. So when we purchased our house, we watched our house get built from the ground up. Most of the stuff was already set in stone. As far as like the layout what they were going to do so we had little to no say so i was like it's okay tell my husband it's okay we can you know make the upgrades as our for ourselves which will make the cost of our house go down so for glass mosaics you need a certain type of grout and it's we got this from floor decor too when we purchased the tile i mean the backsplash and it tells you how to mix it i think it's to the point of the consistency where it's like clay and then you're just going to take it and wipe it on the backsplash. No, it's not going to injure it. No. And you have to do it in as quickly as possible because it dries very fast. So as soon as my husband's going in with it, he's just smoothing it over. I'm going to go in with a wet sponge and wipe it off. Probably let it sit for like a minute or two and then go in and wipe it off. You don't want to let it sit too long. And you also don't want to get it on your cabinets or on your wall. This was literally a three-man job, um, especially for beginners, and I think we did an awesome job. Um, I'm going to show you the before and after video so you can see how it came to life. Like, we did this by ourselves, and we did an awesome job. So I recommend anybody to do it by yourself. If, if you don't feel comfortable, then hire someone. But I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe. 
Another thing to be very careful about is going around those outlets. You don't want to get any water in when you're wiping them down. You don't definitely don't want to get any concrete in because um, or the grout because you have to screw the screws back in and that's going to mess it up. So once they are completed and you feel that it's time to screw your outlets back in, go ahead and do so. Um, we have the adjustable outlet so it's already um, protruding out of the wall. So we don't have to do much and you can see me using the drill. I'm not that good, but I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> we still have to go in. I found out after this, I have to go in and add some more marble. It doesn't have to be exactly underneath it. So I found out after I put the outlet on top that I do need to go back in and put some more tile around the outlet because it was missing something you can see it. Before the with the other cabinets, we had white um, outlets, and since we upgrade, upgraded our kitchen, we upgraded our outlets. So now we have silver outlets, and it matched our decor perfectly. So here's the semi finished um, kitchen that we have completed. We had to go back in and do the cock, cock, or whatever it's called, and also replace the outlets, put the outlets in. So here is the complete finish. Our kitchen is like a mocha color with silver accents and I love it. It came out perfect. We just added some greenery, some jars, and simplicity is at its best. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe. Bye.